Welcome to the Life Unlimited Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice so you can confidently live your life your way for life. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello, and welcome to Life Unlimited with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. I'm Eric, Larry's producer, and I'm here to learn along with you, the audience. Larry, how are you? I'm doing great, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. For those that are joining us through the podcast, you're going to learn a ton. If you happen to be on YouTube watching us, you're also going to see that Larry has a guest and he's given me her bio to read. I'm really excited. So uh, this is Judy Heft. Judy Heft is the founder and CEO of Judith Heft and Associates, financial and lifestyle concierge. Judith Heft and Associates has built its reputation on simplifying the chaos of their clients' lives to give them more time to do what they want to do. A few of Judy's many attributes include author, financial organizer, and bookkeeper. Judy has a passion for helping people get organized, save money, and have more time to enjoy life. Her clients come from all walks of life, including time-challenged executives, divorcees, and individuals with special needs. Larry, I'm really looking forward to you guys' conversation today. Hi, Judy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think our audience will benefit from what you have to say. So why don't we just jump right in and let audience know, how did you get started in this business, Judy? Well, first of all, thank you for having me as your guest, Larry. I'm really looking forward to talking to you and uh, letting you know what I do and finding out a little bit more about you, maybe. So I got started in this business, kind of, I fell into it, let's put it that way. I uh, grew up in the family clothing business and the retail economy was changing. The discounters were opening up. There was, you know, the mom and pop store just couldn't make it anymore. The rents were high. It just wasn't working. And so I wasn't sure what to do. I didn't want to work retail for anybody else. So I kind of reinvented myself and I took my backroom knowledge of bookkeeping and turned it into a bookkeeping business. And that's really how it all started. And then you've written a a, a book about bookkeeping what was the book that you've you've written i know you call it financial life cycles or mastering your financial life cycles right larry that's my second book mastering your financial life cycles i co-authored that with my cfo liz levy and what we did was each chapter is a guide to every decade of life you know we tried to take some of our experience and our learning and help our clients and other people, our readers really learn about what are the definite, what are the things that you need in every decade of life from birth to teenage years, to twenties, thirties, preparing for retirement, thinking about retirement, even planning for, you know, death and all of those things. And the great thing about it is it's a really great manual that you can just pick up and look at each chapter individually or whatever applies to you. And at a, in the back of a couple of different chapters or checklists that clients can use or the readers can use to help them figure things out. So, so, so we, but what, what, so um, was there a purpose? Why did you write the book? You know, we get a lot of questions about these types of things. And we thought, you know, it would just, honestly, I wish I had known some of these things when I started out, you know, planning to have children who tells you there's no manual that comes with that and teaching them about finances I never really did that with my kids. And I thought, you know what, this is a good way to help other people get organized with their financial lives and give them some of the tips that we learned. So I know you mentioned you do bookkeeping, but you, you, you do more than bookkeeping. I mean, you talk about financial and lifestyle concierge. What is, what is that? Was there a separate service or is that part of the bookkeeping service or so why don't you explain to our audience a little bit about that? So our really our meat and potatoes are really main clients are the clients and they're 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 high net worth clients and they range from age. Well, the, the sweet spot is from fifty to seventy. Our clients really range in age from forty to one hundred. I've had them as high as one hundred and seven over the years. One hundred and seven. Yes, I had a client that was one hundred and seven. It was he was just adorable. Wow. Uh, and his wife was, I think, at that time she was close to hundred, and they were married over sixty-eight years. It was a beautiful thing. But I always attribute that to the fact that they never had any kids, so <laughs> less stress than the rest of us. That's but yes, yeah, so you know, we work with our clients that you know. So it's more than just bookkeeping because we do a lot of we call it personal bookkeeping financial organization and what we really do is we help them get their finances organized their daily money management their expenses so you know 
we approach running a household like running a small business and you really need to know your money, your numbers, whether you have a little bit or a lot. It doesn't really matter if you're planning for retirement or planning for college education or planning, you know, to buy a house. You need to know what's going on in your life financially. And I think most people don't pay attention to that. They just, you know, especially today, Larry, with everybody paying everything online, they're not tracking. You know, it's so easy to just click pay bill. And so we take a different like more of a holistic approach and try to help our clients understand, especially those clients that have multiple properties, they really need to know what they're spending on each property. You know, these are mostly vacation homes, they're not rental properties. So they need to know, you know, what the cost basis is and what it's costing them. And then we also work with some small businesses and we help them, you know, get their numbers together and organize. But, you know, it's been interesting, you know, the older clients that really I started this business working with the senior population, which I call the 80 to 100 year olds. And then I was networking one time and someone said, do you only work with seniors? And I said, no, I could work with anyone. I learned not to say no to too many things, figure it, say yes and figure it out later. One of those things. And so, you know, that's how it just really expanded at the time. I don't think I realized that there were younger people that could use my services, too. And then two because, years ago, well, because younger people because they didn't want to be bothered or they just didn't know how or a little bit of both, you know, they just they're busy, especially those clients that are high net worth and they have a few properties. They're busy. They're not necessarily paying attention to all those numbers. You know, we've worked with clients that are contemplating divorce and the non moneyed spouse oftentimes has no idea what they're spending on anything. And they, they have a hard time filling out that statement and net worth financial affidavit. So we help them figure all of that out too. And then hopefully they have a better handle on their finances. So, so true. So I want to just stress two things. So one, one, when you're doing just paying the bills, it sounds like you're doing more than paying the bills. You're meeting with the clients and going over their income and expense statement or to show them what they're spending their money on. Yes, absolutely. So we're running reports for them. We run monthly reports for them. Everything's categorized as if it was a business. So yeah, helping them figure it out. And you know, it's interesting in the beginning with a new client, so many times we find things that are just being auto deducted from their checking account because mm -hmm. they, they signed up for something they forgot about it. Lots of times it's gym memberships, but oftentimes it's buying something online that they didn't see that little tiny check mark that says we're going to charge you every month. You know, they thought they were paying $20 for something, but then next month it came in at $90 and they didn't pay attention. So a lot of times clients just don't pay attention to what they're spending, especially with the auto payments. Right. And, and then uh, it's so true. So many people don't really have a handle on what their expenses are. So without having a handle on what their expenses are, when we do it, we need a cash flow analysis so we can know how much they need, especially if they're older and they're living, they're not, they don't have any income coming in from any jobs that we need to know what their expenses are so we can put together an investment portfolio that works, works for them. And I'm just still surprised there are people out there, the analytics, the engineers, the accountants that come in with detailed expenses, but so many people out there, they, they have no, they have no idea. Um, and they're paying, some of them are still paying the bills literally check by check and not even reconciling their checkbook. It goes on. Oh yeah. It's still, it still goes on a lot. So it's shocking to me how many people don't reconcile their checking accounts. You know, absolutely. And, and you talk about the, you know, divorce world. I mean, we find that the same thing, the non, I'm going to say the non-financial spouse, because we do work with a few, we have worked with a few stay at home dads who were not the financial, um, the financial spouse. So, but yes, going through a divorce and needing to figure out what they're going to spend currently. And then after the after the divorce, they need a lot more handholding. So I can see that being a great market. Absolutely. And so then a couple of years ago, we started the lifestyle division, uh, which is really interesting. So what we're doing there is we're help. We say we do everything from A to Z, arranging finances to zeroing in on our clients' personal needs. So we'll do any kind of work for them. Right now, we're working with an elderly client and the husband has been failing a little bit. 
with you know some cognitive issues and then he fell so we're working with them we're trying to find a, the correct uh rehab place for him to go we're handling all of that or we've done some downsizing clients have a home in another area of the country and so we've helped vet realtors and vet stagers and then help them figure out what they're going to keep and what they can get rid of you know all that type of thing our first lifestyle client really was a funny one it was a woman who came to us and she wanted she had just gotten divorced and she wanted us to change her name for her and said i'm never getting married again i'll never do this again and then came back to us two years later and said, can you help me change my name again i'm getting married <laughs> <laughs> so that was a great story but so we'll do we do a lot of home office organizing for people whatever they need so, so it's really a lot of hand holding. So yeah, so obviously with the you know the pandemic and the booming of Zoom, a, a lot of this can be done remotely. But how do you do your concierge services re remotely? The lifestyle ones. The lifestyle ones. We don't do any of that remotely. So for those clients, they're mostly people in the tri-state area. I have four people that are down on the ground that can go to New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. You know, the bookkeeping we do everywhere. We're across the whole country. I even have a couple of clients in Europe. That's different. We've actually always been remote, even before, not remote, our off, we have a physical office, but we've always worked with clients in the, all the work has been done in the office. We don't go and sit there with them and write checks. We do it all online here. So, so it's just expanded. Yeah, so that, that that's one thing I kind of want to address. So you actually have access to their bank account and paying their bills. How does the process actually actually work? That's a great question, Larry. So when the client first comes to us, the usually the way it's handled is we go to the bank together. Or if they're in California, which we have clients in California, they'll go to their branch and we'll go here in New York or Connecticut. And so I'm added as a power of attorney only on those checking accounts. Sometimes I'm just added as a signer. Every bank has their own different protocol, as you probably know. So I'm added as a signer. And then normally, or usually I would say, we get our own user ID and password. And so we can sign in because I'm in most banks, they've got my contact information because, like I said, I've been doing this for 26 years, so I have my reputation. So that's the way that all works. And then we pay the bills online. We don't pay; we pay them through the bank. We do not go to every vendor and pay the bill there because that's just too time consuming. And then we download everything for personal bookkeeping. We either use Quick and Home and Business or QuickBooks Online. And so then we download and organize it all in there. So, but you do go to the vendors so you can get access to the, the 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 bill right how to, no we don't how, do it that do you, way so how do you how do you get the how do you get the bills and we get the bills a couple of different ways so if the client has e-bills set up or email set up they forward the emails to us if they get paper bills and they want paper bills we give them self-addressed stamped envelopes and they mail them to us either weekly or bi-weekly whatever you know depends on how many bills they have you know, so it works a lot of different ways. So for instance, with a credit card, like on American Express or any other kind of credit card, we have access. I'm added as an account manager on those accounts. So I don't need to see those paper bills because we can get in there and actually see them. And, you know, we'll, if we don't know what something is, of course, we send an email to our client, we reach out to them or call and say, what is this? Is this legit? You know, we try to get our clients to tell us when they're traveling. So we know, but you know what, honestly, Larry, after we've been working with a client for a little while, we have a better handle on what their usual transactions are. So we keep an eye on it. Right. So you have power of attorney. I'm guessing you though, you have st staff. How does that, how does that work as you're growing and picking up more clients? Right. So I have eight bookkeepers that work for me. So how does that work? So it's my user ID and password and they're all vetted and they're very thorough background checks before they're hired here. We, you know, we do a lot of digging to make sure that everything's on the up and up. It's all under my name. Right. I was just going to ask about the, you know, the security. How do you get a potential client comfortable with the security uh, as far as, you know, their account? You know, Larry, it's interesting because it's not usually a, a problem because all of our business comes from referrals. I'd say at least 95% of it, if not more, comes from referrals. So if I'm getting a referral from a wealth advisor, from an attorney, from a CPA, usually the client is okay with that. And they can ask for references, they rarely do. And so I have a great reputation because I've been doing this for so long and the trust factor is already there. And if their attorney is recommending us, 
they're usually okay with that. Awesome. And knock on wood, I've been very lucky with my bookkeepers and I've never had to use my errors and omissions and I'm never going to use it. Well, knock on wood. Putting that out there in the universe. <laughs> yeah, for, <you laughs> and know, I'll for, never need it. For that. So how do you tell, I mean, there are a lot of different bookkeeping services these days out there. So how do you, you know, set yourself apart? How do you tell somebody uh, how you, you know, you're, you're different fr from the other firms out there? Great question. So we are, our bookkeepers are really go through rigorous training, even though they're, they, we won't hire anybody if they have less than five years of bookkeeping experience, but cause I have found in the past a lot of bookkeepers are really good at data entry and they know how to do that, but they don't know the difference between a debit and a credit. They just don't understand that. And so we give them our own rigorous training. So everything is done our way, exactly the way we want it. The reports all look the same. A report for client A looks the same as a report for client B, C, or D. And so those are our protocols. We have you know, good systems in place and those are followed by the bookkeepers. And, and you know, how do you work with a with a client? Because some clients may have a lot more bills than other clients. But when it comes to is, based upon the bills, that's how you you put together what you you charge for your services. Yes. So we start out for the first couple of months on an hourly basis because, as you may not, I may or may not know, clients always say, "I have three bills. I never use my credit card. There's hardly any activity. This should only take you an hour." When in reality, it takes a lot more than that. So we like to get into their accounts first before we give them a monthly fee. So we start off hourly for the first two to three months, depending on how complicated it is. And then we come with come up with a uh, a regular monthly fee that's you know fair and agreeable to everybody. Right. Speaking, of, speaking of credit cards, a, a thought just popped into my mind. So on the credit cards, do you actually go through the credit cards and figure out what each charges for it or is it just one line item for the credit card no 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 line no line item that says credit card payment everything is categorized separately and if we don't know what something is first we google it try to figure it out and then then we'll reach out to the client and ask them but like i said before after we've been working with a client for a little while we know their spending habits and we really pretty much know what everything is yeah, and then of course monthly everything is you know reconciled and up to date. Right. Cause I, I would think now, especially with points and people want to have credit cards that a lot of their, their bills are, are paid through the credit card. So having, I know for myself, when I, when I do it, I'm not going through my credit card and I using everything in there. So I'm sure that's got to be a, 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 definitely an added value for someone to really be able to see what they're spending on everything by, uh, by itemizing their credit card. Oh, definitely, especially if they have multiple properties. So that's really where it comes in too. If a client has two or three properties, we'll break it down by property. But yeah, you're not going to see a line item that says credit card payment right. coming from us. So you're working with high net worth um, uh, individuals, a lot of them that have different properties. And I would guess the still the elderly clients, because we see that happening, especially with um, that can no longer handle their you know, paying their bills and they need somebody they can trust to doing that. And even the children are reaching out to, uh, you know, to you, I'm guessing to help with some of those, uh, those services. No, definitely. Absolutely. I just got a call yesterday from someone who I'm going to set up a meeting with him and his mother because he want he's been helping his mother. He doesn't have the time. He doesn't want to do it anymore. There's too much there's emotions tied with that too. I mean, you know, it's like the child and the parent and then the role reversal comes in and nobody's happy with that. So yes, we work with a lot of elderly people to relieve some of the stress from their children. And the beauty of that is because everything is so transparent, the children can also have access to the checking account or we'll send them reports too, but they have the online access so they can keep an eye on everything all too. And we encourage that. Yeah. I mean, that's so important. Actually, I think podcast one, one eight, Eric, I think we just did one on how to, how to talk to your, your parents as they're, you know, as they're aging. Plus, you know, some of the things like we have people that we know that have long-term care insurance policies and want to make sure that that pol that premium is, is paid each, each month. So having someone to do that will ensure that no nothing falls through the cracks. Absolutely. That's so important, especially with insurance. Got to keep an eye on it. Hmm. So any final 
words you want to mention, Judy? I mean, I think that you've explained exactly what you do and how you work a little bit differently than then it's a little bit more than I'm gonna, we're going to call them lifestyle services. So you can offer more than just bill pay, bill paying. Anything else you want to let our audience know today? Yeah, just that, you know what? My book is really a helpful manual. If anybody's interested in it, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's called Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles. My podcast is Mastering Your Financial Life. It's on all of the channels that yours is on and everybody else's. I'm too numerous to mention. Of course, on YouTube. And my website is uh, judithheft.com, J-U-D-I-T-H-H-E, Evison Frank, t.com anybody can reach out to us there there's a contact us page i'm happy to give a free consultation if anybody's thinking about working with us or has any kinds of questions i'm always available to talk to anybody so we're here we're available and i love talking to people wow awesome yeah. always happy to help so uh th yeah this has been great so and anybody that is thinking about either themselves or knows somebody that needs judy services um, she just gave you all the different ways that, uh, that you can reach her. So Judy, thank you so much for, for joining us today. It was a pleasure seeing you. For, thank for you, Larry. It was my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. It's always great to talk to you. All right. Well, this has been fantastic. Uh, Larry, again, you brought on an amazing guest, Judy. I learned a ton today, including, uh, the, the key to longevity is not having kids. I wish you had told me that about 28 years ago. I just, uh, no, I, I love my kids, but the grandkids are fantastic. You just kind of skip right over there. Uh, exactly. so, yeah, right. So anyway, thank you so much. And I know that the, we gave contact information. Larry, if people are interested in, in speaking with you and uh, especially going through some of the old podcasts uh, because of the information that you've shared, how do they get a hold of you? Sure. They can go to our website, hellowealthmanagement.com. And there's a, con uh, a connect with us button there as well that they can schedule a free 20 minute call with one of our planners. Uh, there's also on there, there's a podcast button. You can go right on the podcast and you can take a look at all the podcasts that we've done in the past. Yep, absolutely. Again, thank you both. And of course, our last thank you always goes to the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Life Unlimited podcast with Larry Heller. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'd appreciate a like and a follow there as well. We humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it and leave a review, as this also helps others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hello Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time.